Somebody say, gun time. <laughs> Robert Foster, we did part one this Sunday. We're going to do part two this coming Sunday. He's going to come and just shoot you with some bullets. We hear about ISIL, ISIL, and all that stuff. And you hear more and more from the White House on down saying Islam is a religion of peace. Now, let's be fair. Of course, when I, when, when I stood, because Patrick wouldn't, I told you, I'm God's man. And I preach against it. You just didn't judge me. You just didn't turn on me until Obama did it. President Obama's not the first president that I stood in this pulpit and spoke out against when the president called uh, Islam a religion of peace. The first preacher to do that, the first president that I heard do that was President George uh, Bush. And I said then, oh, really? Have you read the Quran? Where'd you get that from? It's not a religion of peace. As a matter of fact, they used to boast before it became politically incorrect that the God of the Bible, Yahweh, he's a forgiving God. But the mighty Allah, Allah means war. Allah loves to make war. But the God of the Christian, he forgives. And now we're being lied to. We're being lied to. When President Bush said it, I, I, I see one thing about me, I'm documented. Every time I preach, I'm taped. I said then he was wrong. We're being lied to. And I'll, I'll deal with you uh, another time about how they're bringing Ebola over here and lying to us about how you catch it. Because people who haven't come in contact with fecal uh, uh, material, blood, uh, uh, bodily fluids, and all that uh, uh, have caught the disease. The cameraman wasn't having sex with none of those people that, that he was taping. And he hadn't touched them. And he, and he, and he wasn't washing them down. But he still got it. Well, I'm going to tell you now. If, if, if they don't shoot me first. Come here, come here, come here. Robert. Shoot the gun. He's going to, I'm, I'm going to shoot you about, in, in 60 seconds, I'm going to shoot you a thousand, I'm going to shoot you 10 or 20 times with some facts. And if you want to go deeper. See, we've been fired up. We, we've, been, we've been rolling ever since 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, you just got here for Shiloh. <laughs> We've been Shilohing all day. I couldn't wait to get it. Shoot, man. Truth about the Quran. Muslims believe that there is one God and his name is Allah. Muslims believe God was never married. Muslims believe since God was never married, then God has no son. Muslims believe that Jesus is not God. Then who is Jesus to the Muslims? Muslims believe that to know Jesus, who Jesus is, one must read the entire Quran, 114 chapters, 6,666 words. In the Quran, the prophet Muhammad is found in four places. In the Quran, the name G Jesus is found in 25 places. This brings about confusion. Why does the Quran give more preference to Jesus? In the Quran, there is no mention of a woman's name, no mention of the prophet Muhammad's mother, wife or children's name is mentioned. In the Quran, there is only one woman's name found, Miriam, the mother of Jesus, no other woman's name. In the Quran, chapter 3, the name of the chapter is the family of Miriam. And why does the Quran say all these things? In the Quran, chapter 3, verse 34 and onward, states Miriam was born without original sin and never committed any sin in her life, and she was always a virgin. In the Quran, chapter 50, verse 23 states, Miriam went to heaven with her physical body. In the Quran, even the assumption of Miriam, the mother of Jesus, is mentioned. Now, about Jesus. In the Quran, chapter 3, verse 45 to 55, there are 10 points which the Quran makes about Jesus. One of those points, Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the spirit of God. Jesus is the Christ. So the Quran gives the name of Jesus as the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and Jesus Christ. In the Quran, Jesus spoke when he was two years old. In the Quran, Jesus created a live bird with mud. Muslims believe that only Jesus Christ can give life. In the Quran, Jesus cured a blind man, a man with leprosy, and so on. In the Quran, Jesus gave life to dead people. In the Quran, Jesus went to heaven. In the Quran, Jesus is still alive. In the Quran, Jesus will come again. 
Now, reading all these things about Jesus, what does the Quran say about Muhammad? According to the Quran, a prophet Muhammad is not the word of God. According to the Quran, the prophet Muhammad is not the spirit of God. According to the Quran, the prophet Muhammad never spoke when he was two years old. According to the Quran, the prophet Muhammad never created any bird. According to the Quran, prophet Muhammad never cured any sick people. According to the Quran, prophet Muhammad, he himself died. According to Islam, he is not alive and will not come again. There are many differences between these two prophets. However, no prophet is called the word of God, but Jesus Christ. No other prophet is called the spirit of God, but Jesus Christ. No other prophet is called the Christ, but Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ. Islam believes God created the universe through his word. Now, is the word creation or creator? Remember, the Quran states that Jesus is the word of God. The Quran states that the word of God is the creator. The Quran states that Jesus is the word of God. In conclusion to all these facts, Muslims must become Christian. You see, what is the point that we're making? Are we endorsing Islam? No. Are we uh, saying that uh, Islam is right? No. The point is, we're trying to show you that we're up against these mixed up religions. And they're trying to be sold to us as being religions of peace, religions that are good. And, and see, we're giving bullets out so that we'll know how to witness to these people and win them over because their own book does more to endorse the Lord Jesus Christ than it does yes. the, 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 their own God whom they worship and uh, whom they serve. And this is why they get so angry because they can't on an intellectual basis defend it. Because it's indefensible. That's right. So then what they do is they cut heads off. <laughs> they make powerful altar calls. Take a gun, convert or die. But there's only one true God. And he's the God of the Bible. And we love him. And he died for us. And he rose again the third day. Next Sunday, if you want to hear more and learn more, meet us at 8 a.m. in our morning glory class. Somebody shout, give him a big hand. Woo, so many things. So many things going on. There's so many things going on. And yet Jesus is in charge. And Jesus is in control. And I'm more excited for the God of the Bible than I have ever been before. I'm excited about being a Christian. I'm excited about Shiloh. And we're tackling these issues. And at 8 o'clock this morning, I told the class, and the class was filled out. But everybody was here. I said, you know what? Just about everywhere else at 8 o'clock this morning in some of these services, not all of them, but in a good many of them, you know what people were hearing? Give your neighbor a high five. Slap your neighbor. Look around. Tell your neighbor. Shake your neighbor's hand. Say neighbor, old neighbor, neighbor this, neighbor that. Mother, we're not learning about the neighbor. We're learning about the enemy. And we're learning how to stand on the word of God and have answers for this day and time. Are you glad to be at Shiloh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come next Sunday and learn the difference between the, what is being said when they speak of ISIL. ISIL and ISIS, they're different names. You hear ISIL. ISIL comes from a word that actually means uh, the destruction of Israel. So when you hear anybody in the news, in any public office, and they use that word ISIL, don't call their names. They know that the Islamic hearers know what is meant by the word ISIL. Comes from a word that means the destruction of Israel. Isn't it amazing? All this code in wickedness, but many of us don't know. I'm going to tell you. Amen. And then once you know, then, then you're responsible. Uh, praise the Lord for what you know.